Hey everybody, Austin back again with another Let's Play video. Today it's going to be Wolfenstein 3D for the PC. Uh, yeah, I'm, we're, we're gonna play some Wolfenstein 3D, guys. Um, <laughs> I know that sounds so exciting, but, you know, to be honest, I don't even really feel excited right now. Um, I've actually meant to get a video out for you guys earlier on in the week. I wanted to do a different kind of Let's Play, maybe a Neo Geo CD game, maybe an, you know, an NES game or something like that, but... Man, I have just not felt like doing any videos at all this week. Um, it's just... <laughs> Yeah, so this is kind of like me sitting down on my computer. I haven't done a PC Let's Play in a long time. And so, you know, I and I kind of feel like playing some Wolfenstein 3D. I don't know how far I'm going to get. I don't know how long I'm going to play. But, uh, yeah, let's play some Wolfenstein 3D. And, um, yeah. Now look at it. You notice how choppy it is. I'm actually running this through Steam, through DOSBox. And actually, if you hold Control and then smash F12 a bunch of times, uh, it'll actually raise your frame rate and of course you see the fraps counter window up there as well Which I'm going to f12 f12 and f12 here. It's gone uh, Let me actually hit escape the frame rate should be a lot better now because I've cranked it up and we'll see once we get into the game um, Sound is obviously on it's all <laughs> Look at that Disney sound source. Oh shoot. I wonder if there's emulation for that. No, of course there's not You'd have to have an actual Disney sound source. I actually had that as a kid uh, my dad on his old IBM 286 based uh, Computer had a Disney sound source and we had one of the Disney learning games for it and it actually sounded pretty good, but I Never had a game that supported it aside from the learning games um, because the 286, we had a EGA-based graphics card. It was incapable of running Wolfenstein. So, unfortunately, I never got to try Wolfenstein on it. Um, yeah, and even when I had, like, Commander Keen, I don't think that supported the sound source. So, I had to deal with the PC speaker on that one. But, <laughs> I totally forgot about that. And this just kind of reminded me about that. Uh, get a little piece of uh, history there. All right, mouse sensitivity. This, this should actually already be configured because I, I remember probably six months to actually maybe longer than that. I actually tried running through this entire game. Um, and Wolfenstein 3D is only a couple megabytes in size, so it's not like I ever have a desire to remove it from my computer. So, all right. So everything is mapped to the good old fashioned arrow keys. How I used to play first-person shooters. Now I play with W, S, A, and D, but you can't configure it that way on DOSBox. Actually, you might be able to with some, uh, you know, well, back-end configuration, but I don't really get that deep into DOSBox. Maybe to change, like, a filter in the graphic settings, but that's it. I don't really care about anything else for the most part. All right. Um, yeah. The Carmax. All right. New game. Question is, which one do we want to play? You know, we'll go ahead and just start with uh, episode one because that's what uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys will be familiar with if you've ever played this before. I know some of you subscribed to me are probably younger and you might not have played Wolfenstein 3D. If you haven't, I definitely suggest giving it a shot. Either download it through Steam, uh, download it through Xbox Live. I think it even might be on PlayStation Network. Um, you know, try it. It's a fun game. It's old. It's the granddaddy of the first-person shooter genre. Granted, it wasn't the first, but it was a very early... It was, I'd argue, it was the first popular one. Um, and it's it's a classic. It's still a lot of fun, uh, despite its simplicity. And I still like the graphics, too. Uh, they're pixelated, uh, like most games were from the era. But it's you got... BJ Blazkowicz, the main character, you see his face kind of like his eyes are going all over the place and he's It's cool. It's you know, there's it's a, a certain kind of feel to this game that you don't get with modern first-person shooters and uh, and uh, Yeah, I just I like it. So All right, so arrow keys shifts runs, okay, and you notice the frame rate's actually a lot smoother now than it was in uh, you know that demo video that was playing so one shot kill. He took more kills. I kind of like some of the elements that this game has as well. Um, like sometimes enemies will just die in one hit. And it seems to be kind of randomized. Um, you definitely do, I think, better damage when you're up close. 
but uh, occasionally you'll just you'll fire a shot at a guy like there halfway across the screen and he'll just fall down in one hit. Uh, at least for their the regular grunt enemies, the regular soldiers in the brown outfits. I love the sound effects in this game as well. <laughs> the voices were, were pretty well done in this game. It's good stuff. <laughs> the the sound on certain actions though could be uh you know definitely improved upon. Like the knife. <laughs> it's a good old ad lib though. I mean if they uh were making this game with you know better sound hardware at the time, like like with Doom, it supported the Sound Blaster All-32 and I think some Roland's, um, you know, cards and other things as well. I keep hitting this, even though it doesn't do anything. Um, funny enough, there's actually a secret here in, I think, the 3DO and the Jaguar versions. Um, the Jaguar version was actually made by id Software and they cut out or shortened a lot of stages. Uh, for instance, there was a secret here and you'd get an ammo pack, maybe even a backpack. Uh, and this door right here was gone in the Jaguar one as far as I remember. I think same with the 3DO one. Although that one was um, developed by a different company. That The 3DO version wasn't made by id Software. Um, and the 3DO version was actually uh, based on the Macintosh version which was actually developed by the same uh, studio that made the 3DO version. Basically, they, I believe they made the Mac version first, and then they made the 3DO version. And uh, the same company that actually made the Mac version ported uh, or made a rendition of it for the 3DO. It's very similar to the Mac version. Might be missing a couple levels, but uh, they did beef up the soundtrack in the 3DO version. That's a great version of Wolfenstein 3D. I've done a casual look at on that before. Uh, I'll probably eventually do a Let's Play on it. Uh, not anytime soon, but... It'll be a game I should definitely do a Let's Play on. Uh, but yeah, um, Wolfenstein 3D. Good stuff. Lots of fun. Um... You know what's actually kind of funny regarding Wolfenstein 3D is that the base game of Wolfenstein 3D uh, was not the first one I owned. I actually owned Spear of Destiny first, and that wasn't until 95 or 96 or so. Uh, maybe, not, maybe not even until 97. Uh, no, nah, I, I don't think it was that late. I think it was probably within that first year my dad got his Pentium 1 uh, based 166 megahertz machine. It was either 95 or 96, I think. And uh, that was our actually a major upgrade from the 286 that we had previously. The 286 was, you know, my, my really the only reason we had a computer at the time, the 286, was because Dad, uh, he did printed circuit board designs, uh, PCB designs. He worked with AutoCAD and things like that. Uh, and whatever else the the tools of choice were back then. I'm pretty sure it was still AutoCAD It's just a really 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 old version of AutoCAD way back when And so that's why we had the 286 and granted he would use it for work. My mom would use it for word processing um, Me typing up reports and things like that and uh, for school and Me playing the occasional game, but unfortunately the 286 was so limited uh, you know, it might have been able to handle something like Wolfenstein 3D at a really slow frame rate if it had a better graphics card in it, but the graphics card was just, you know, it was an EGA based. Uh, so the best I could get was, you know, some of the earlier DOS based games. This is a secret level, by the way. Some of the earlier DOS based games, like, you know, I won't say earlier, but pre prior to Wolfenstein 3D era was like, you know, Commander Keen and uh, some of those other ones. So I did play some of those. I got to play the really bad uh, <laughs> Mega Man PC games. I actually owned both of them. Um, Mega Man 1 and 3. And both those, neither one was actually based, neither one was based on the NES games. Funny enough, they were actually brand new games. And they actually really weren't great games, but I enjoyed them for the time. Uh, they are some games I'd like to go back to and try again. Um... Because I did grow up with those games, you know, I was playing those games when I was in first, second grade, etc. So... <sighs> but yeah, um, when we finally upgraded to the old Pentium 166MHz computer, 
Uh, no MMX or anything like that. That was just before, I think, the whole MMX thing, or a couple years before it. And, um... Yeah, I mean, Wolfenstein 3D, um... The first two games I actually got for the computer, my parents got me The Seventh Guest, and, um... Doom. Doom 2. <laughs> it's funny, I didn't even play the original Doom first, I played Doom 2 first. I mean, when it came to the PC versions. Uh, the actual first version of Doom I did play, like, uh, intensively, was the Super Nintendo version. Ugh. Um, great memories of that one, but I don't recommend it to people these days, uh, outside of, uh, you know, general curiosity's sake. But yeah, Doom 2 and The Seventh Guest were my first actual computer games for that uh, more modern, more as of then modern, Pentium-based system. And, uh, shortly thereafter, I eventually got Wolfenstein 3D, The Sphere of Destiny, which Wolfenstein 3D, Sphere of Destiny is actually the sequel to this game. Uh, it's actually not a huge upgrade at all. It's pretty much the same type of graphics. The graphics aren't really any more detailed. Um, you know, this is basically the exact same engine. But, uh, it's brand new levels, it's a brand new campaign. Uh, a couple extra features, like you have, uh, ammo packs in that one, which again would later make their uh, reappearance in the Jaguar and 3DO and Macintosh versions. Um, Spear of Destiny also had a pretty neat final stage and final boss area. I'm not going to spoil it if you never played it before. Uh, and it had a couple new textures, you know, which was pretty cool, and it had some pretty clever level design. I really liked the level designs in Spear of Destiny. It was, it was a really good game, but it was kind of more the same, and kind of like Doom 2 was to, uh, to Doom. Uh, it was very similar in that regard, but still a fantastic game. Just like Doom 2 is a fantastic game. Um, you know. So, Spear of Destiny was actually the first PC Wolfenstein 3D I had kind of permanent access to, that uh, I didn't have to go over to someone's house and play a choppy version on their slow computer. <laughs> I did have a buddy, uh, his dad I think was in government contracting in the IT sector, so his dad always had a bunch of computers, and I think his dad might have been a computer geek at one point in time as well, because he had a lot of PCs. He had probably three, four, maybe five computers uh, and that was, we're talking like early 90s here, and, you know, <laughs> my parents only had one computer, and, you know, they kind of had a reason to own the computer. It was, you know, word processing, again, for my mom, and work stuff for my dad, and, uh, but my buddy's dad had a bunch of computers, so I don't know, maybe he did development or something, and I didn't know, because I was really too young to really understand that stuff at that time. Um, maybe that's what he did, maybe he had multiple computers to test his stuff on, I don't know. But, uh, I'd go over to, over to his house, we'd play the usual console stuff, you know, but we'd have nights where we would just sit and play PC games. And, um, he'd be on one computer playing something like, uh, well, I don't know. Um, we'd just be playing a lot of DOS games, things like that. Wolfenstein 3D was one of them. Um, we would actually try to god mode the game and just knife everybody. <laughs> or just run around with the pistol. Um... You know, use the, the level select to get to that one hidden stage with the Pac-Man ghosts in it. <laughs> Good times. Um, this level's pretty disorienting, actually. It's, uh... And it can be a little tricky if you... Well... I don't know, the trickiest part, I think, is just that it's disorienting, and that sometimes enemies are hidden within cubbies like this, and you have to just watch out. Uh, tread carefully in this stage. And I'm backtracking. <laughs> All right, where are we going? I already went there. Yeah, this is the beginning. What? I don't know why I'm going back here. I'm I'm stupid. <laughs> All right. It's funny. The music is kind of chopping up a little bit. That's interesting. I don't. It's not really supposed to do that, but. It might actually be because I cranked the frame rate up too high. And now the music can't really keep up properly. 
And that is something that actually happens when, uh... There we go. That's actually something that happens when you speed up the frame rate or the CPU cycles way too fast in DOSBox. Um, I know that because uh, I was actually playing the Catacomb in 3D the other day. It was actually July 4th. I was at my parents' house. I was kind of bored. I had been there for quite a few hours. The fireworks hadn't even gone off yet. So I was like, all right, I'm going to download something from good old games. So I downloaded the Catacomb 3D pack. And uh, it was pretty choppy when I first ran it. Of course, it's, you know, the nature of DOSBox. Um, so I cranked up the CPU cycles big time. And uh, what happened is the music eventually started chopping up. Uh, but it also had started giving some, like, graphical defects. Like, uh, the syncing couldn't keep up properly. Like, the vertical sync. And uh, so it... <laughs> It started glitching up graphically as well, and so I lowered the clock cycles just a little bit to where the frame rate was still pretty much the same, um, but the issues went away. Like the music, you know, sped back up to normal. It stopped. It stopped skipping. Ah, oh, jeez, man, what the hell am I doing? Oh, der. So now what you'll notice me do in this game is I try to play relatively carefully because uh, you can actually get your ass handed to you really, really fast in this game. Um, enemies deal a ton of damage in this game, especially mostly up close. And you know that an enemy has done a ton of damage is when you get hit and the screen stays red for a couple seconds. Uh, and then if you look down at your health bar, your health bar is probably at least halfway gone or something like that. Um, so what you see me do is kind of inch my way through the stages. I also want to make sure that, uh, my aim is, you know, it's, well, it's on point. Because, uh, later on in the game, it does get to a point where you really need to be accurate because ammunition is so scarce. And so by not bolting around like a bumbling idiot, um... You know, I'm able to save some ammunition. Although, so far I'm doing pretty well. I haven't really had a need to get any health packs or anything like that. But here's some cubbies, like I was mentioning. You can actually run forward into their sight, and that'll trigger them, and then you can really just bolt back, you know. What's great about Wolfenstein 3D, and one of the tips that uh, magazines would give you, is to just stay on the corner like this. Fire around the corner. Uh, because what happens, how the enemies operate, is they usually come running from this side, and then they walk out a little bit, then they turn at you. So, if an enemy's out here, you can actually shoot him from here before he even gets to the spot where he starts turning at you. Now, he might turn at you right here, versus over here, but it's still enough for you to, to kill him before he even, you know, makes an action towards you. So... And another thing you can do is, um, you know, if you're in a room, and but you can't see around the corners, obviously, you can make a shot. A lot of times that triggers the enemies just like that, and then, you know, you just pick them off as they come through. So, like, right here, you know. Now that I'm up closer, I'm doing probably a little bit better damage. Now these guys, the SS, SS guards, they're actually uh, a little more intelligent than your regular guards, so... So, I mean, they, they aren't as good of an example as the regular guards are. Uh, now, this exit over here... Whoa! Scheisse! No pun intended, I'm playing... <laughs> Uh, you see, that's why you don't- I was just- I rushed through, and they were there, and they took away half my health in literally just two hits. Um, got an extra life, too. Alright, some levels have duplicate exits, but only one is the actual real exit. Pretty sure this is the real exit? Yeah. And this is just a fake exit. It's probably just a room full of guys. Yeah. So that's also something to be aware of, uh... They, the level designs do get a little tricky on you sometimes, but it's never too crazy. It's never too intense or anything like that. 
It's just all about being careful. I mean, this game isn't about tons of puzzles and stuff. You gotta get a couple keys, that's really about it. Nothing too special. Um, screw it, let's just go ahead and end. Technically, I'm only at level 2, so I should probably speed it up a little bit. <laughs> um... Now, if you hit F2, you can actually save your progress, and that's... I had saved up to episode 5, so I had almost completed the game last time I played. So what I'll do is just... There you go. And if you hit F3, you can actually reload your game. But I don't want to do that. I don't know if it overrides your score or not. You know, let's test it out. Screw it. No, score is still the same. Okay, cool. That's another thing I kind of like about this game is, you know, it's got a score, it's got lives and things like that. It's really unnecessary because you have saving. It's really unnecessary when you think about it, but... Screw you. But, uh, I don't know. Back then when this game came out, a lot of games were still arcade-oriented. Especially the console games. Well, and of course arcade games, naturally, because... Arcades were still were relatively popular at the time. Um, and I mean, and the IT software guys, they were, they were true gamers too. They, you know, well, I'm sure most developers are, are true gamers as well, but, uh, these guys really games, uh, you know, especially if you've watched videos, uh, of their office tours and things like that and, uh, making of videos, it, these guys, they played a ton of games at the time and, you know, I think they even had the Neo Geo when it came out. They were they were big gamers. Um, so, you know, the games they made, that they, they definitely... I don't know. I don't even know where I'm going with this. Um, they kind of knew what was up with games at the time. So... And their games, their early games, uh, were are kind of a reflection of that. You know, the arcade nature. Uh, Commander Keen was kind of the same way. You had... Pretty sure you had points and all that stuff in that game. And... Um, It is kind of today seen. It's kind of interesting seeing it today in a first-person shooter. Uh, Rise of the Triad, I believe, was the same way. You had scores and lives and things like that. Um, it's just kind of neat. Now, if you want to play for score, well, I'm not sure if there's really a reason to because. I, I don't know if the score maxes out, like if it caps out, like. I don't know if it goes above the six digits that are available in that field, uh, on the score field there. But as you can see, I've, I've gone through two stages basically, and... Um, I've gone through two stages and I'm almost at 150,000 points already, and... The field looks like it can only go up to 999,000. So... <laughs> Who knows? I'm sure somebody watching this uh, can validate how high the score actually goes up to. Or maybe it maxes out at 999,000, but uh, the game still registers higher than that, so when you game over or something like that, it will actually recognize the score. See, this is what I'm talking about, you know, make your shots count, because now I'm pretty much out of ammunition, because I was kind of goofing off. Shoot. Ding, 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 ding. Duh. Come on, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. You can actually move faster with the mouse. So if you run, or run, run away from enemies, sometimes you can side strafe quicker than you can actually run forward. So that's something to, to keep in mind. That's probably actually really disoriented, disorienting for you guys watching this video, so... For that, I apologize. I should have made, like, a subtle warning at the beginning or something before going into this, saying that... Yeah, this is probably gonna be, uh... <laughs> uh, nauseous. It's gonna make some people nauseous. So...
Had a feeling there were some guys in there. Um, you know what's funny? I haven't even gotten a single secret since I've been playing this game. Well, except for that first one, first couple on the first level. But, uh... Alright, let's just end the stage. I'm already there. Uh, let's just hope that the level doesn't get too crazy. I'm sorry, the episode doesn't get too crazy after this. Uh, well, I know it doesn't. It's just a matter of me making my shots, picking up every ammo piece. I just don't want to run out of, am out of ammunition like I did on that stage. That's something that doesn't usually happen to me. I usually have at least a couple bullets left. Um... Let me see what control... Okay, I just lowered the CPU cycle a tiny bit, so the music should stop chopping up. It, it's, it's already stopped chopping up. It's control F11. It's a little slow. Eh, let me... Well, I don't think you guys are gonna... ...really notice, because it's, uh... You know, the frame rate in this game is going to get chopped in half anyway once I upload it to YouTube, so... Now one interesting, I guess you could say, feature about this game... <laughs> Is that once a door starts opening, you can actually shoot through it. And that goes for enemies as well. So that's something to be, uh, be aware of when you're playing this game. And, um... But yeah, a tactic I use... Is when a door closes... The second it starts opening, I start... I open fire. And the enemies die. Because my bullets go straight through the door. Just like so. So, hey, a key. Now, when you're playing with the keyboard and mouse in combination, for some people, it might actually be easier to just play with one or the other. Uh, you know, play it old school style with just the keys, like I'm doing right here. Um, I don't know. That might be easier for some. If you want to play with a control pad, you can. You'll probably have to use X Patter or something like that. Uh, but if you play keyboard and mouse style, what I suggest is being very... Uh, give, give the mouse a lot of finesse. You know, be kind of slow and smooth with the mouse. Uh, because Wolfenstein can get very jerky very quickly. And if you're very heavy-handed with the mouse, it's... Yeah, it's just gonna... <laughs> I don't know. In order to be as accurate as you can and not make stupid mistakes, uh, you kind of want to be a little bit slow with it. You know, creep around the corners. I would... Personally, what I do is I map a strafe button to the right mouse trigger. And then the middle mouse button I actually use is the open key. Otherwise, you've got to use uh, a key on the keyboard. Um, uh, strafing with the mouse, I think, is actually really important. Is to kind of like get around corners like that r pretty quick. Um, it's really important. Now you don't, you can't really do it Doom style. You can't strafe Doom style in this game. And what I mean, is, let me let me actually go back a step. You can. Doom has the exact kind of strafing as you have in this game. Although in Doom, you can circle strafe. Um, you don't want to actually get in front of an enemy and start wiggling back and forth in this game. You know why? Because it doesn't really do you a damn thing. It's, um... The enemies, you know, pretty much all the bullets in this game, with the exception of a boss or two, have, uh... Or a couple bosses, actually. Pretty much just the bosses. Um, every enemy except the bosses have, you know, they just kind of lock onto you and they just fire. There's no projectile to avoid or anything like that. They either, 
They, they just hit you. It's pretty much guaranteed no matter where you are. As long as they can see you, they can hit you. Uh, and so, wiggling back and forth, the strafe doesn't, doesn't do anything. Um, so, Doom, it kind of does. Uh, except for, you know, the couple chain gun guys and the pistol base guys. Um, in Doom, a lot of the enemies, especially as you play the game, you know, later on into the game, a lot of the enemies in that game shoot projectiles that you can see, and so dodging and strafing a lot works in that game. It doesn't really work in this game. Because uh, there are there are very few projectiles you actually encounter in this game, so which you want to use the strafing for is just again to get out of harm's way pretty quickly. Like if I'm looking through this door, I just strafe back pretty quickly, and what I do is I just kind of you know strafe strafe calmly, smoothly. Now, one other interesting feature about this game, or this specific version of Wolfenstein 3D, is when you hold down the open door button, it makes this really annoying grating sound. And what's interesting, though, is um, for secrets, you can actually just hold down the button and run up against the wall. And if a secret's there, it'll trigger it automatically. You don't have to keep mashing the button like you do in, say, Doom. Doom, you have to keep pressing the, the open button if you want to find a secret on a wall. Wolfenstein, you can just hold down the button, run up against the wall, and again, if the secret's there, uh, it'll open. So, it gets annoying though, so, but as I'm playing, uh, you'll, you'll hear that grating sound a lot. It's, it's really an annoying sound, but again, it's the ad-lib. <laughs> You know, the ad-lib wasn't an amazing uh, sound card. I mean, it was great for the time. Um, I'd say the cap the capability wasn't quite uh, as on par with uh, other sound cards that came shortly after. Um, I want to say shortly after. I'd say a little bit later on. But, uh, but yeah, Wolfenstein's, uh, you know, it pretty much used ad-lib primarily as uh, one of its main sound card options, so that's what we've got here. So again, sometimes you can just fire a bullet, and then if you hear the enemies, then you know they're there. Sometimes when you have sort of pillars like this, you just want to go around them a couple times because what happens is an enemy is actually sometimes chasing you and uh, you don't want him to catch you off guard when you're say facing this way and he hits you from behind um, make sure you go this way to make sure uh, I didn't miss any ammunition or anything like that because I am kind of low
Now, kind of like how you can shoot through doors as they're opening. Now, you can't shoot through doors when they're closed. So don't try to shoot through a door when it's closed. But the second it starts opening, it becomes an object you can shoot through. I'm guessing pretty much every movable object in this game you can shoot through. Uh, as well as certain things like pillars and solid objects that you can see through, like these tables you can shoot through. Um, enemies can shoot through each other as well. So if you have a room of, say, three to five guys, you know, <laughs> kind of huddled up in front of each other, run out of the way because they can all pretty much shoot at the same time and chances are multiples are going to hit you at once and you will die a lot faster. So... Just a word of warning if you uh, plan on playing this game or maybe have played this game but, you know, really aren't too good at it, never really gave it too much time. Um, there are definitely some tricks in this game that, if you know them, will definitely help your game a lot in terms of, you know, survival. Alright, let's exit this level. Oops. Still haven't gotten the chain gun yet, surprisingly. Actually, I don't even know if it's uh, available this early on in the game. It might not be. If it is, it's probably only available through a secret, uh, which I obviously did not find because I don't have it. <laughs> In the Spear of Destiny, there's actually a secret on the very first level. There's actually a bunch of secrets in that game. Uh, even on just the first level. There's like five or six secrets on just the first level alone. On Spear of Destiny. Um, and you can get the Chain Gun, which is the most powerful weapon in the game. I, well, actually, I wouldn't really say it's the most powerful. Uh, I think the bullets are the same power as they are normally. The thing is that it fires them out at a rate that is just... Crazy! You can run out of it, you know, your whole clip very, very quickly. Um, so I guess in that sense, it's, it's very powerful. Um, you can mow down big rooms of enemies very quickly, kind of like watering grass, um, watering the lawn. It's just it sprays out big time. Um, where was I going with that? What was I gonna say? But yeah, Spirit Destiny, you can get the, pretty much the best weapon in the game uh, on the first level. Which is cool. In the uh, Jaguar, Macintosh, and 3DO versions of Wolfenstein 3D, there are actually other weapons as well um, that have been added in. Id Software added the Rocket Launcher and the Flamethrower to the Jaguar version, and then when the Macintosh version was released, they kind of took the same idea and included both those weapons in that version as well. And then, of course, that made it into the 3DO version. So... So, those weapons were... They were good. Um, they were good. What I like about, uh, you know, the flamethrower and that, and the rocket launcher... The rocket launcher basically just acts as a slower flamethrower. It's really kind of a redundant weapon. They probably should have come up with something different. Uh, but realistically, that the rocket launcher from Sphere of Destiny might very well have, you know, laid the groundwork for the rocket launcher in Doom. So, you know, I can't discount it completely. Um, but, uh... The thing is, the flamethrower cuts through pretty much multiple enemies at once. And the rocket launcher does the same thing. Uh, and the flamethrower actually shoots way faster than the rocket launcher. So it's just kind of like, alright. Actually, in reality, now that I think about it, the, the flamethrower in the Jaguar version might actually take a couple hits on the big guys, like the SS guys. The regular peons, it just cuts through them in one hit. Uh, it's been a little while since I played that version. I haven't played it since I did my casual review on it. Uh, probably about a good six months ago. So... Alright, this is bad. 
Yeah, not good. <sighs> Definitely not good. Getting a little too risky here. Running out of ammunition, which I really don't want to do. <laughs> just try to let them walk in and pick them off. Just to... Just so I can get the ammo like that. Now, once you start getting farther into Wolfenstein 3D, and especially on the hardest skill mode like I'm playing right now, uh, the game get, will actually get pretty intense, which is one of the great things about it. It's not, like, just because it's old doesn't mean it's, it's easy or anything like that. Uh, it can still pose a nice challenge. Actually, a really good challenge. Uh, I mean, one simple little mistake can cost you a lot in this game. And I'm going to sort of backtrack, because I think there might be some food back here I missed. Or, you know, there was food back here when I had full health and uh, I had no reason to pick it up, so... And this also kind of gives me a chance to go back and hit every wall to make sure I didn't miss a secret or something like that. Secrets usually equate to health. Health packets, things like that. Which obviously will make your life a lot easier. And again, I'm sorry, this is probably really disorienting. <laughs> There's one. It's even disorienting for me, and I'm playing the game. I mean, that's how this game is. I mean, it's just like, oh, man. My eyes. <laughs> but the reason I'm doing this is to see if there are any secrets I missed or something like that. So... Because my health is low and I don't want to die. I like getting through these games on, say, my first try. Um, not having to reload my game over and over and over again, so. I'm surprised there hasn't been a single secret here. Oh yeah, this is where I, I just was. Okay. No secrets? No secrets? Where are the secrets? There we go. See what I mean? Health pack. What I'll do is, just what I did there, is bolt through the door really quick just to grab the ammo packs, and then bolt back. It's not really necessary when you have a lot of ammunition, but I kind of don't have a lot of ammunition right now, so... Now, in games like Doom and Quake, I'm not nearly this careful when I play them, because in those games, as long as you play accurately, and you dodge, and you kind of know what's going on, you don't need to. Uh, this game is a different story. It definitely helps a lot to be very, very careful in this game. Maybe not so much on the lower skill levels, because the enemies are a little bit dumber, there's less of them. Uh, they don't do as much damage, as far as I'm aware, so... Uh, but I am Death Incarnate, which is the hardest mode of the game. You definitely have to be careful.
no secrets. Now what happens is, later on in the game, there will actually be enemies in the elevator shaft, so... That's something you have to watch out for as well. Alright, let me save my game... ...again. Yes. Alright. We're actually working our way through the game at a decent pace. You know, if I can keep this up, we'll, we'll beat- we'll go ahead and just beat this episode. And then I'll wrap it up. I don't know if I'll revisit this game, I just kind of felt like playing Wolfenstein and, uh, talking about it and reminiscing about it, and... Uh, despite it being a really, really old game, it's in a really archaic first-person shooter. Uh, I still find it to be a lot of fun, I still come back to it at least on a yearly basis. I probably finish this game, uh, probably at least once a year. Uh, so, I still play it, you know, frequently enough. Did not see him there. See, again, that's why you gotta be careful in this game. <laughs> and when that one shot took away, like, 40 to 50% of my health. I mean, that's just, that's a lot. Granted, I was, it was kind of a close hit. And if you notice, the screen sort of just, uh, it stayed red for a moment longer than it normally does. And it'll actually stay hit, it'll actually stay red longer than that if you get hit even worse. So, I mean... <laughs> When you're playing and you just... It's BAM! And the screen just goes like completely solid for a second or two. Uh, you know that you've really gotten smacked. And uh, you should probably step back for a second, cool down, and not be so risky. <laughs> uh, if you die in this game, uh, granted yes, you can just reload your game. But if you're like me and you don't like to reload the games, you like to just kind of play through. Uh, see how far you can get without reloading. Um, you have to restart the stage with uh, no weapons and no ammunition. Well, I'm sorry. With just the pistol. And the, the whatever, like, eight bullets you have in your first clip when you start. Just like you did uh, when you first started the game. So... And on these uh, later stages in the game, it's kind of hard to recover from that. Uh, with just the pistol. I mean, it's it's perfectly possible, but it's tough, so you gotta be careful. And like right here, I'm being careful. I don't want to go up and try to face all these guys at once, because again, I basically have no ammunition. And, and you know, the game's not dropping me any, uh, any bones either. It's just like, I have to rely on what the game enemies give me, and that's it. So, I have to be careful with my shots, I have to make them count. And that's the trick right now, is just making it all count, so... Oh, jeez, man. I got smacked again. Damn Nazis. <laughs> Well, that's not looking too good.
Oh, man. So it's at this point when your life gets so low that you're just really crossing your fingers for some secrets. <laughs> some secrets that have health, especially. Gah! And the enemies are getting a little more tricky. It's, you know... How the game works in terms of... Oh, crap. How the game works in terms of how the enemies react, they have different levels. They have kind of stupid level where they just walk at you the second they hear a bullet. They have other levels where they just won't do anything until they see you. Uh, you know, so the enemies start to get a little more, well, sneaky, I guess you could say. And you really have to be careful with that. <sighs> totally running out of ammo, which is not cool, especially once the blue guys start coming. I mean... <sighs> this is really pathetic. I, don't, I actually don't like playing like this. Normally I play a little more run and gun, but normally I have a little more ammunition. But only having 10 bullets isn't gonna let me mow out, mow down our whole room of enemies. Oh. <sighs> Doing stupid things like that doesn't help either. Come on. Walk through the damn door already. I know there's more. Yep, there's one. Come on, you can do it. You can do it! There you go. <sighs> and there's another one. What's kind of interesting is in the iOS version of this game, uh, John Carmack actually did that himself completely. And, um, he took out the scoring mechanism in the game, but he left the, uh, the little special items, like the chalices and things like that, that you see me picking up. And, um... They actually give you health in the iOS version. Whereas in this one, they give you points. Oh, come on! Secret area with enemies. Thanks, Wolfenstein. Thanks. This is why not all secret areas are good. Son of a... Oh, that sucks. Oh, that sucks hardcore. <sighs> Stupid game. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna do things the hard way, guys. We'll show them what Wolfenstein skills we actually have. I should just go through the whole level with just the pistol. <laughs> See, that's what I'm talking about. 
The second I started playing risky, stupid things like that started happening. Derp, 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 derp. <laughs> Going that way, I think, is about where the exit area was, uh, was. I'm gonna come back this way. And... Go through these doors. Get some ammo I probably missed the first time around. Or did I? No, I think I was in this room before. definitely want to use your hearing in this game because uh, this game utilizes a stereo effect pretty much to the full effect and that'll help you react uh, a little bit better just like in Doom and Quake and you know all those later id software games you know audio was obviously a big deal to those guys when it came to the the sampled sound effects uh, the voices and whatnot. I mean, they use panning, hard left, hard right, dead center, things like that. And uh, if an enemy's to your right, well, the sound's gonna come out from your right. So. And what's, we, we kind of take that for granted these days because it's just, it's, it's what you expect. But back then when this game came out, uh, it was, it was pretty crazy. Alright, well we're making better progress this time. I'm not getting my ass handed to me. 
now that I have an idea where some of the enemies are, like that guy right there. Crap, why did I do that? Oh, I ran through the door. That was stupid. <laughs> now, there was a secret here, and I probably shouldn't come here, but I kind of want to see what's over here. I mean, maybe there's a better weapon or something like that. Seriously, guys? Oh my god. <laughs> Some secret this is. I'm low on ammo, so I'm gonna take my time. There you go. Walk through the damn door. That's what it's there for. fully said the F word. Where'd they go? Come on. Yeah, I'm going back to get some health before I even try to mess with that again. <laughs> Except that I don't even remember where the leftover health packets are, so... This is gonna be a shot in the dark. Let's try this again. Provided those guys haven't walked through by now, and some of the enemies, they'll start tracking you. You know what? Just so we don't have to do that all over again, I'm gonna save it. And if I fail, I'll just reload it and go to the next stage. <laughs> ah, the beauty of old PC games. <laughs>
There must be some good stuff in there if enemies are guarding it like this in a secret area. I mean, that's what common sense would tell me anyway. Yep. Well, if you're playing for score, this, uh, this place is definitely a must. Heh! <laughs> ah, crap. Dog food in this game awards you, I think, four hit points, so... Damn it, man. You see? Ugh. I'm going against my own advice I gave earlier on in the video. And I'm paying the price for it. And it's like, of course there would be enemies there, because I heard enemies. Gee, thanks guys. <laughs> Give me dogs to waste my ammo on. Yes. Extra lives are really good in this game. The actual extra life icons, because... Uh, I believe they will actually refill your health completely when you pick them up, so... If you see one of those, grab it. Alright, well, I... Meh. I guess that was worth it in the end, guys. That actually let me end the stage on full health and much more ammunition than I had before. Oh, crap. Shoot, man. Sometimes if you try to walk around a corner like that, It'll actually stop you when there's an enemy there, because I guess... I don't really know what the reasoning is for that. Something had Some engine quirk, I'm sure. So that's kind of how you can tell there's an enemy right around the corner. It's just you have to make sure you get away fast enough before he, you know, sees you. Which is going to happen because you basically touched his, his character on the... And the game pretty much triggers them to go. Alright, so that's a door I'm going to need a key for, so we'll be coming back here later.
See, that's what I'm talking about. Don't get multiple enemies lined up with each other because they can shoot through each other. And it sucks. Sucks big time. I thought there was another guy. I must have killed him. Never assumed. <laughs> Never assume you've actually killed them, though, because sometimes you miss one and they come up from behind and will catch you off guard when you're rolling around a corner and that sucks. Yeah. Alright, let's go back get this health. Just zoom over here. My side mouse strafing. Ha 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 ha. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's disorienting even for me, so... <laughs> uh, it's actually making my eyes hurt. Uh, it's almost bedtime for me, so... My eyes are a little sore, a little tired. It's been a full day for me, so... So, playing a game like this late, late at night, as such, is probably not the best idea. And I'm totally going the wrong way, so... Alright, there we go. Didn't get that key yet, so I'd come back this way. Did I come in here? I did. But I did not come over here yet. I heard enemies, so what I like to do is come back. Yep, just like that. If enemies hear you, and they're walking around, chances are they're going to eventually open up a door and come after you. So what I like to do is clear them out before I go on to the next area. Simply because you don't want to be mowing down a bunch of enemies, and then all of a sudden a guy just creeps up behind you that you didn't think was going to be there. Or, or sneak up on you, basically, so... It's just an added precaution... ...that I typically, you know, play along with. So we're on floor six. God, I think there's, I think there's eight or nine floors. Actually, I think there's eight. So, the ninth I think was the, uh, the hidden one I got to. I don't remember. Maybe that was the tenth. I don't. Uh, I seriously don't remember now. I mean, like I said, this game can get, uh, tense. And that, that's kind of where it's at right now for me as I'm playing this. I'm just... It's kind of tense. And, um... As you progress farther into the game, the later episodes get a lot more difficult. They're a lot more challenging than this one is. Uh, especially episode two. I mean, that the difficulty spike there is just... It's much more difficult than this one. Primarily because of the Frankenstein enemies. They 
have a tendency to shoot faster and harder and um, and there's more of them it just it just feels like there's more of them at least so okay that was stupid <laughs> I should have just shot them I wanted to save my ammunition No secret. I see food. I also see enemies. God damn it, man. Ah. Oh, just kill me already. Jeez, oh, man. See, that's exactly what I'm talking about, is... Plain stupid. And, you know, an enemy was just walking around, and I missed, and he killed me. You know? It's just... Oh so frustrating because it's it's not the game's fault it's not like i died because a controller glitch or something like that i died because i was being careless it's completely my fault and that's 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 the ball kicker right there is that it's it's completely my fault so This actually isn't where I wanted to go. I wanted to go the other way. Because I know I'm going to have to come back here. I didn't even get that first key yet. Jeez, man. I'm slacking. Alright, let's get over there. Pistols can definitely deal out some damage when you're up close. I mean, yeah. But you're taking a big risk by doing that. But then again, it's not so bad if you can kill, you know, <laughs> a bunch of enemies in a row just being up close to them, so. All right, I don't even really care about the chalices anymore. The golden artifacts doesn't even really matter that much to me. I mean, I've just been picking them up just because. Because they're there! And you know what? It was probably one of those guys that was still just moseying, in or moseying around and came up from behind me and killed me when I had 20 health. So, I mean, I died again just because it was completely my fault. It's not paying attention, not playing safe enough. Wolfenstein, you have to play safe. You know? I mean, unless you're trying to speedrun or something, that's a different story altogether. But I mean, if you're trying to get through the game, Find all the rooms, you know, kill all the enemies on each stage and whatnot. You gotta play safe. 
Uh, I mean, again, at least on the hardest skill mode like I'm doing right now. If you're playing on the easiest skill modes, it's, you know, probably a little bit different, but... As it stands right now, with how I'm playing it and how you guys are watching, I... I have to play carefully, but... You know, I... <laughs> my will is weak sometimes, so... With that, I, I tend to... And the same thing happens with other difficult games I play, or like if I'm playing pinball. I should be playing a very specific way, but I'll trail off and start playing a different way. Oh yeah, this is where the key was, that's right. And the thing is, that'll bite me in the end. Is... I'll lose focus, I'll start playing a little bit differently, and then I'll die because of it. So, and that's kind of how Wolfenstein is. You gotta, you gotta play safe, and you have to keep playing safe. You can't really let up. Um, you really can't let up. That's just how this game is. So, I mean, at the, at this, all the same, that's actually kind of one of the great things about it because, you know, I think a lot of people don't give these old first-person shooters enough credit. They probably think, oh, they're too simplistic. I mean, they're simplistic. Whoa, what the hell? I mean, they're they're simplistic in certain regards, like you can't jump and there's not multiple like floors and things like that. But uh, the games are still challenging, and you know, <laughs> early '80s arcade games are very simplistic, but. They're challenging, and that's why they're still great today, is they're not, you know, just because they're old doesn't mean they're going to be a walk in a park. And in a lot of cases, the older games are a lot more difficult than the newer games. So, I mean, a game like Wolfenstein, it's aged decently, in my my personal opinion, because it's challenging, you know? It's it's not a walk in the park. So, despite its simplicity, simplicity it's still a tough game. So... I knew you guys were going to be there. Alright, I'm not even going through those other rooms I missed, so... Secret ratio, zero. That's great. You got zero secrets. Okay. Yeah, we're... This is the second to last level, pretty sure. And this level is actually in the Jaguar version. And it's actually, I think, the second level in the Jaguar version. Uh, or at least there's an alteration of this stage in the Jaguar one. Again, the Jaguar version, it was made by id Software. There's less stages than there are in this uh, version of Wolfenstein 3D. Uh, what's interesting about the Jag version, though, is that... Uh... Oh boy, lots of doors, which means lots of enemies. What's interesting about the Jag version is that it was kind of like a hybrid of Spirit of Destiny and Wolfenstein 3D in the one little package. So, you had some things like, uh, in Spirit of Destiny, they introduced these, like, uh, mid-level scenes, and they included those in the Jaguar version, which there's none of those in this game, until you beat an episode. That's a little bit different. Um, so that that's kind of interesting. You also have, like, the, the ammo packs, that you had from Sphere of Destiny, those are in the Jaguar version. And you have Sphere of Destiny stages. It's, you'll go, you know, through a regular Wolf 3D stage, a cutback Wolf 3D stage, mind you, and then you'll play a Sphere of Destiny stage. And you'll fight a Sphere of Destiny boss, and you'll fight a Wolf 3D boss, and it's really cool. The Jag version of Wolf 3D is, is really good. If you're one of the few people that has a Jaguar, I definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, if you're a fan of, uh, you know, these old first-person shooters. Uh, the graphics were actually improved in the Jaguar version as well. Uh, they might, I think they're actually a higher resolution. And, um... The sprites and everything's been completely redrawn, so... The textures look better, they look bigger, everything looks beefier. It's pretty cool. Hey, I'm about ready for this to end. <laughs> I wanted to play Wolfenstein 3D, but now I just kind of don't want to play it anymore. So... When I play by myself solo, I actually usually play 
a little bit quicker than you've seen me play in this video, and I'm pretty sure I've stated that already, but uh, in case I didn't, uh, well, yeah. So, this has actually lasted a little bit longer than I expected it would have, considering this is just the first episode. Granted, I did die a couple of times, which set us back a little bit, but... Double check this room again. Make sure there's no key. All right. So it's something you got to watch out for as well. I mean. <laughs> I got hit, and it was because an enemy hit me through the door while the door was opening. And that takes some getting used to. My left pinky finger is starting to ache. <laughs> because I keep holding down the shift key with it. And I've been holding it down for like the last hour and a half. However long this video is so far, I, I can't tell because... Um, I'm in the game. The game is uh, full screen. It's maxed out, so... Oh, jeez, man. I'm just going in circles now. Oh, I hate it when I do that. Ah. Big circles. I mean, basically, I need that key to get through that silver door. Now, Wolfenstein 3D actually did not have an auto map feature, and that was actually introduced into later versions, uh, later conversions of the game. Like the Jaguar version had it, the 3DO version had it, um, I'm sure the Macintosh version had it. So, and uh, that was that was a big help in terms of situations like this. Like if I had the auto map up, I could just pull it up and look at the part of the map that just kind of broke off and went into nothing and went into nowhere. And I know that, just by looking at it, that's where I need to go, but I don't have that, so it's like, it's like, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> go back to the beginning, like I've just done. <laughs> yeah, okay, this is where I'm supposed to go. Yeah, the Jaguar version has the same level, except it's, it's stripped down a lot. Like, this room, the Jaguar version, only comes to about here where I'm standing, and it's very small. Uh, and I believe the other room right here... Yeah, the Jaguar version, the room goes all the way out, I think, like this, but it doesn't... I don't think it stretches around like this, though. Yeah, I mean, the Jaguar version is very... the levels are very stripped down. It's not a bad thing, actually. I kind of like the smaller level designs. Um, they don't feel smaller, actually. I mean, that, it's kind of... doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, right, on paper, but... Um, the rooms still feel big. There's a lot of big rooms, there's a lot of corridors like this. There's, there's plenty of this in the Jaguar version, there's just... the levels aren't as large, you know? At least we're making progress now. Oh, 
Come on, man. Bullets didn't even count. I'm glad that counted. Because those were my last bullets. <laughs> This is where I need to make sure there aren't any leftover enemies to come up from behind me. Like that guy, he was walking around. And there's probably another guy over here too. No, he was in here. Ah, uh, just give me the key, man. I'm gonna end this. <laughs> I'm gonna end it with my sanity intact. No, again, I love this game. I'm a big fan of Wolfenstein 3D. I've been playing it for a big portion of my life now. Um, all versions, actually. I mean, the Jag version, this version, Spear of Destiny, the 3DO version, Xbox Live Arcade version, which is basically this version. Oh my god, I've just run in circles. Alright, let's come back here. See, I mean, I'm a big Wolfenstein 3D fan. Love the game, but... You know, all the same, I just kind of don't feel like playing it right now. I want to end it. <laughs> you see, what? Uh, I'm confusing myself. Alright, this looks about right. I think this is where I was, yeah. I think I see it! Brr. Sorry for the grunt, but that threw me off guard. Ah. I said it before and I'll say it again, this game can get intense. If you're not if you're not playing carefully, this game can get really intense and You know, again, the kicker is, if you're not playing safe, you're not playing smart, well, you're gonna get bit, and you're gonna die, and it's... It's gonna feel frustrating, but... You know, you're only gonna have yourself to blame, because you weren't playing careful enough. Now, I really do like trying to blaze through this game as fast as I can, but... That gets really intense as well, because you have the tendency to get hit more, you get shot more, you start running out of health more, you might miss more. Um, of course, that can actually go two ways, because technically if you're blazing through the game, you might be killing a lot more enemies up close, which means you might actually be saving ammunition because you'll kill the enemies faster. Whereas me, I've been kind of taking my time, killing them from a distance for the most part. Oh, there's the exit. Oh, okay. The key opens up both doors. Alright. So, this should be the last level, guys, for this episode. I hope so. Pretty sure it is. Yeah, this is it. And the reason that's a good thing... Oh, it's not. Really? Another level? Ah, oh, god damn it, man. <sighs> See, it, it fooled me. It looked like it was... the, uh, the boss stage. Which I should have known, there's actually different boss music, so... Different music for the boss stage. I should have... Caught that right away. I should have known better. <laughs> Alright, guys. These episodes are long, too. I mean, they, uh... There's a lot of stages. So...
No secrets. Thanks for the ammo. Hey, a secret! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> that was a lucky shot. I just happened to fire it off by accident and I killed him. That's hilarious. Wow, that wasn't as long as I thought it would be. <laughs> like, only killed two thirds of the enemies and got pretty much no secrets other than that one. Why well, is a lot of secrets in that stage? If that one secret was only 7% of the secrets in the level, there's a lot of secrets in that stage. Some of these levels are pretty big once you start getting into the secrets and so forth. Alright, this is the actual boss fight. I know that for sure. So. Alright, now this is actually going to be a walk in the park because you have secrets over here. Is it this one? Oh yeah, the first room I think is on this side. Where are the secrets, damn it? Give me the secrets. Come on, dude, seriously? Am I missing something here? There we go. I guess I was just going too fast. And here's the chain gun. Yeah, it's about time. <laughs> I guess it's just only on that side. Okay. Gutentag. <laughs> he says Gutentag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And he will kill you really fast. If you want him to. <laughs> he said mercy. Alright, that's it. Grab the key, but I'm gonna come in here. Not that it matters, because... 
when you start the next episode, you, you're pretty much starting off from square one again. But, I think there might be a ton of enemies in here. No. There are in the Jaguar version. There's even an enemy here where there's a secret in the Jaguar version. If you're playing on the hardest mode, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah! <sighs> Alright guys, well, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here. Hope you enjoyed this video. I don't know, the last half or so probably wasn't all that entertaining since I wasn't talking a whole lot, but uh, such is the nature of Let's Plays on semi-repetitive games like this. I mean, it's it's Wolfenstein 3D. It's, um, it's a fun game, but there's only so much you can talk about because the levels tend to, I don't know, have very similar level designs. Uh, at least on this first episode, as you progress farther into the game, uh, the textures start to vary a, a tiny bit, uh, new enemies start to appear. Uh, like episode 2, you fight these Frankenstein zombie type of enemies, and they're pretty ruthless. So, uh, you know, the game does mix up things a little bit as you progress, but that first episode kind of drags on a little bit, I think. So, but there's the ending. You've already seen the first screen, so I'll go on to screen number 2. Uh-oh. Okay. I kind of like paused for a second. That was weird. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah, this is kind of funny. This first episode was the shareware episode. Uh, back in the day, they would just distribute games on PCs. They would pretty much give you the first episode for free. Like, Doom was the same way. Wolfenstein was the same way. Pretty much anything by Apogee did that. And then other companies kind of caught on to it as well. Wolfenstein, I think, was one of the earliest that did it and was kind of successful with it because the game was so... was pretty much cutting edge for the time. It was very impressive and so like people shared the crap out of this game. I remember my dad at his office, his... Um, he had this loaded up on his computer at work. Back in the day when they couldn't really track that, um, you know, everything was just kind of run through DOS, so... <laughs> I don't even think they had uh, were networking on his computer systems back then. You copied things to disks, you dragged it to other people's computers, so you could install games on your work computers. Nowadays, you'll get fired for doing something like that because you can track it. Um, but uh, yeah, so Wolfenstein kind of spread around like fire, um, Doom even more so. But uh, thanks to the shareware model, so the episode we just played through. You pretty much could have just downloaded it for free back in the day or got it on a shareware disc or something like that. Bought just the first episode for a buck or two or three or something like that if you went to a computer store. Um, or you could just, a friend could give you the disc and install it on your computer for free and it was legal. So, uh, free first episode. But it was a good, good start to the game. Got a lot of people to buy the game. Um, but that was that's a lot of content for free basically that was an hour and a half at least I'm sure it might have been two hours I don't know I don't have the clock in front of me so but uh, yeah so there you have it guys Wolfenstein 3d for the PC again I hope you enjoyed this let's play uh, I'll be back with some other videos sometime soon and uh, yeah take care guys see you next time